In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Mother of perpetual help, grant that I may ever invoke your powerful name, the protection of the living and the salvation of the dying. Purest Mary, let your name henceforth be ever on my lips. Delay not, blessed lady, to rescue me whenever I call on you. In my temptations, in my needs, I will never cease to call on you, ever repeating your sacred name, Mary, Mary. What a consolation, what sweetness, what confidence fills my soul when I utter your sacred name or even only think of you. I thank the Lord for having given you so sweet, so powerful, so lovely a name, but I will not be content with merely honoring your name. Let my love for you prompt me ever to heal you, mother of perpetual help, mother of perpetual help, Pray for me and grant me the favors I confidently ask of you. O Mother of Perpetual Help, through your grace and intercession, we ask for your assistance for an end of the coronavirus pandemic, for the continual growth of holiness in our parish, for an increase in our daily lives of the fire of our Catholic faith, for the needs and intentions of our parish, and for the intentions of those for whom the candle before your image is burning this week, and for the intentions that we hold now in the silence of our hearts. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, our Father and Protector, pray for us. Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton, our Holy Patron, pray for us. Saint Dominic, pray for us. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
My dear brothers and sisters, before we enter into these most sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and we ask God for his pardon and his peace. You were sent to heal the heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, which you receive for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong wind was rendering the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are the Israelites. Theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, the Lord was not in the fire. But then there was a tiny whispering sound. The first reading, as well as our gospel reading today, teach us what we are to do when everything goes wrong in our lives, 
how we are to react, what we are to respond to in our relationship with Christ, that we are to go back to the very beginning of our relationship with Christ. That is what the book of Kings and the prophet Elijah teach us. Elijah was a prophet in quite a chaotic time, a time not unlike our own, but it was a time when Israel had all gone into apostasy. There were very few people left in the state and the country of Israel that were faithful to Yahweh. They had all gone chasing after the Baals. They had all gone into sexual perversion. That is what the Baal cult was all about. And yet, as he fights, as he seeks to unite Israel back to Yahweh, Right? This is right after we have the famed account of him slaughtering all of the false prophets by calling down fire from heaven. And yet now, doing the right thing, trying to lead Israel back to their relationship with Yahweh, he has a death warrant on his head from Jezebel. And he finds himself making a long, long pilgrimage from where he was at up in the north, where Carmel was at, to where Horeb is at, is about as far in the land of Israel from one another as you can get. It's like going from Canada down to the southern part of Texas's border in the land of Israel. But why does he go there? He goes there because Horeb is the place where God first struck his covenant with all of Israel. Horeb is the place in the mountaintop where Moses received the Ten Commandments. It's also called Sinai. It's right outside of Egypt. It's in the Egyptian wilderness. And so he goes back to the beginnings of God's relationship with Israel to beg for, God, to beg for all of Israel some sort of activity of God to say, I've done what you wanted, and the people still haven't repented. In a sense... You can see uh, a, a similar disposition in Paul, this great crying out in Paul, Lord, slaughter me if it would help Israel come to you. Take away everything from me, but that they would know you. Theirs is the glory. Theirs is the power. Theirs is the kingdom. Theirs is everything. And they ignore you. They've rejected your Christ. What are we to do? Elijah feels like a failure. Paul, in some sense, we don't look at him that way now, but Paul feels like a failure, that his mission has been thwarted. Elijah's mission has been thwarted, that they have failed God. And yet, in our own lives, how often we can feel this way? How often can we feel that we've done the right thing and where is God? or God has left us, or abandoned us, or God has allowed our enemy to overtake us, God still seems to be afar from us in doing the right thing. And this is where silence in our lives comes in. This is where memory in our lives comes in. To journey back, God told his people in the Old Testament constantly, remember the good things that I have done for you. Remember who I am. That memory serves a role in our spiritual lives. It draws us close to God if we but know how to use it. Ignatius of Loyola based his, inspire, his entire spiritual teachings on the function of memory and imagination how they were to be used in drawing us close to Yahweh, to God, our Father. So just like Elijah, when we find ourselves seemingly at the crossing points, seemingly failing in everything that we're doing, when we find ourselves uh, where we are overcome by our enemy, we're the only one left. We don't get that today, but Elijah complains that way to God, to Yahweh here on the mountainside. Everybody else has gone off to false worship, and I am the only one left. When we find ourselves like Peter sinking in the waves, we are to cry out to God, but we are also to remember God, and that takes moments of silence to go back 
to the beginning of our lives of faith. Sometimes when the extravagant doesn't seem to be working, when the intensity of our prayer seems to leave us empty, when all of these things seem dry, to go back to the very beginning and ask ourselves, what does it mean? What does it mean that God even listens to me? What does it mean that I am his beloved son or his beloved daughter, my fundamental identity? What does it mean that he tells me that I am with you always? To go back in these little ways to the very beginnings, the foundation stones of our walking with God to begin with. Right? In the same way that Elijah went back to the very foundation of Yahweh's covenant with all of Israel, so too our own lives have their stories. Our own lives have their ups and their downs, have the moments of God's nearness as well as their times of crucifixion. Our own lives have our moments where we, like Peter, are trying to walk on water and we get overtaken by the distractions, by the failures. We get overtaken by the things that are happening around us. Especially in this day and age, it is very common for people to come up to me and say, Father, I am just so overwhelmed by the anti-Christian attitude in society, or I'm, I've had enough of this coronavirus virus stuff, and it is getting me downcast. It is getting me uh, broken in spirit. I'm finding myself anxious. I'm finding myself depressed, right? There are a lot of things right now. There are a lot of waves and winds that are surrounding us and swirling. And in some sense, the spiritual culture in our day and age is not that far from what it was in Elijah's day and age, where we find ourselves living in a wicked and a perverse culture, a culture which celebrates things that should not be celebrated. We find our culture trying to indoctrinate our children as such. One of the things that just a side point that needs to be out there because it needs to be a warning for us to watch, to be watchers. Well, the watchmen were the name for the prophets. But the Baals, whom Elijah had to face in his day and age, the Germanic version of that took a different name, and they are making children's toys now, Legos, under the name of that spirit. Do you really want your children playing with these things? Of course not. Of course not. But we're living in an age where we have to be on our guard against anything. The name of that Germanic spirit is Thor. It is the same name as Baal. Celebrated in the movies, The Avengers has his own movies out there, has his own toys out there, etc. We need to be on our guard because the culture is not that different from what it was like in Elijah's day and age. But we who are faithful, we who have come before our God, we who have come here to worship him, come to Mount Zion, come to the place where he comes to give us his body, blood, soul, and divinity, for us, we need in our own lives amidst all of these various things of the culture never to get downcast or discouraged. It is so hard to sanctify a soul which is downcast or discouraged. That was the number one rule of St. Philip Neri. He said, God loves joyful hearts. God easily sanctifies joyful hearts. And so, when we find ourselves sinking into the waves and into the muck that is around us, we need to call out to Christ like Peter. And Christ will immediately, that Greek word there is very strong, immediately he reached out to save him, to draw him back into relationship with himself. Our God does not condemn us in our struggles. Our God is the God of all encouragement. He knows the battle that we face. 
immediately he will help us when we fail or we fall. But we, for our part, must seek him, go and seek him out, must cry out to him, seek him like Elijah went on a pilgrimage to seek him from the north down to the south, and to rediscover, reunite ourselves, solidify our relationship when it seems to have fallen aside, solidify our walk with God when we seem to have stopped praying, to renew it, to rejuvenate it, how important that is. Always remember, too, part of that renewal means spending time not only in prayer, but in silence. Silence is very important. Cardinal Sarah just wrote a book about the power of silence, and it is very important in our spiritual lives to learn to try and cultivate silence in a world that is filled with rapidity and noise. It's always everything has to be moving faster or everything is constantly trying to speak to us with the noise. That silence, God's covenant, comes and God's words to us come in the silent depths of our heart and it does produce peace. Even now, even now, God speaks. And it is a regular thing for us if we know how to cultivate the silence in our minds and in our spirits that can listen for him. Because God will speak through your thoughts. Everybody knows what it is like to have thoughts that you think. Right? If Father told you to think about dinner tonight after Mass, you would know exactly what you might want to think about. You can cultivate it up in your mind. And everybody knows what it is like at times to have things come into your mind which are not wanted. They are not thought up by you. They just come. In the same way, when God speaks, it is very similar Thoughts of peace that produce a peace and a quiet and a truth, a truth that's in accordance with scriptures, will come. That's how God speaks. That's what the saints talk about when they say hearing his voice. But if we're so filled with interior noise that we're not listening, we're not listening, we're not going to be able to hear him. Contemplate the fact that God came to Elijah. God renewed the covenant, rejuvenated Elijah. God strengthened Elijah, not with the great signs and wonders, right? The fire, the earthquakes, everything. These were the signs that were there for Moses. This is a theophanic experience. This is a God breaking into the world experience. And yet, the scripture author wants to say that the closest Elijah comes to God is not through the lightning and the thunder and the earthquake and the fires the way that it was for Moses, but it is in the silence. God renews the world by the silence of the nativity. Think about that. God raises his son from the dead in the silence of the middle of the night. Silence has a power to it that we have to learn to reverence in our own lives. So, when things are going astray, when you feel weakened, when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel beat up, when you feel as though you have lost all hope, Renew yourself in silence. Find time for silence in your life. Go backwards in your memory. Go backwards in to remember the good things that the Lord has done for you. Stir those memories up. They will draw the Lord close to you. Remember the Lord is eternal, which means every activity that God does for us is, in a sense, quasi-infinite. It means that if he broke into your life at a certain point and gave you a certain grace, that grace is still out there to be received and to be renewed in your life. It doesn't have a beginning and an end. 
an eternal being as he acts with us has the ability at any moment, at any moment, to renew the grace that is given. Because that grace, as it is given, is something that is, by its very nature, eternal. You sensed it in time, but in a sense, it radiates throughout all time. So as you go back and as you remember it, you are not just remembering it, you are, in a sense, reliving it, re-experiencing it, re-tapping into that grace. It has a power there. So, go back to the beginning and also cry out. Do not be afraid to cry out. If condemnation comes to you in weakness, it is not from Jesus Christ. Jesus will never bruise a broken reed. Right? Never break a broken or bruised reed. He will never crush a soul. We get this beautiful, beautiful Psalm 51 in the, new, in the chapel now that was just placed there. Beautiful about a humble and a contrite heart. God will never spurn, but like Peter, will, he will immediately reach out to you, immediately lift you up, immediately calm the winds and the waves that are surrounding you and encourage you. O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? It is not a condemnation of Peter. It is simply a summons to Peter to say, Did you not know how much I loved you? Did you not know? So, this week, going forward, no matter where you are at, seek to cultivate silence in your life this week. Seek to remember some moments of grace in your life this week. And seek out God. Seek out him and cry out to him, whether you are in desolation or whether you are at the highest points of your joy that you have ever felt. Cry out to him. And he himself can make it even deeper if you are in joy. And if you are in desolation, will call you out from it and renew your youth or renew your joy. asking God's blessing is that we ask his blessing to permeate all aspects of our life, especially those relationships which are dearest to us. This weekend we have the marriage blessing, asking God to come with his great power and to renew the very graces that he, get, that he gave to all those that were married in the month of August. So it ask at this time that if you are celebrating a wedding anniversary this month to please stand as we pray God's blessing and God's renewal upon your marriage. We ask almighty and eternal God that you who have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that it has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church as his spouse Look with favor and anoint these married couples whom you have anointed and whom you have united in marriage as they ask for your help and the protection of the Virgin Mary. They pray, Father, that in good times and in bad, they will grow in love for each other, that they will resolve to be of one heart in the bond of peace. Lord Jesus, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you are near to help them. In their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. In their joys, let them see, Jesus, that you are the source and the completion of every happiness. And, Lord Jesus, complete the good work that you have begun in them. We ask this all through Christ our Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us all stand together as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers and our petitions, we present them now to our Heavenly Father. For the church, that we may learn to discern the voice of God, not in wind and earthquake and fire, but in the gentle whisper that announces his passing by, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's proclamation of peace may be a reality for all nations, that kindness and truth may meet and justice look down from heaven on obedient hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we not faint and fail in our faith when we see how strong the wind is during the storms of life, but to keep our eyes on Jesus, confident that in his power we can walk on the waters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of Israel, who can claim the covenants and the giving of the law, the worship and the promises, that they may also come to recognize their Messiah in Jesus Christ the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are fearful, anxious, depressed, or grieving, that they may hear the firm and kind voice of Jesus saying to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our faithful departed ones, that they may be with God on the mountain of his glory, pure and peaceful in his sight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the living and deceased members of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish, whom we remember at this Holy Mass, for all of the needs that are written in our parish book of petitions, and for those prayers that behold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our little one receiving her first Holy Communion this evening, we pray special graces upon you and ask that Almighty God, as he comes into your soul for the first time in Holy Communion, would fill you with his divine love beyond all comprehension. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, these are our prayers and our petitions. We lay them on the altar of Our Lady, Mother of the Prophets, Immaculate Heart. We unite them this day with the prayers of Paul the Apostle, Elijah the Prophet, the prayers of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton and St. Dominic. And we ask some of you, as always, through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. (laughs) 
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, St. Dominic, St. Elijah, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The bread that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the masses of it. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.